Hey everyone, welcome back to Pureology. If you're new here, my name is Piri. I'm very glad to have you here. Today I'm going to be going over all the settings in Escape from Tarkov. It can be pretty overwhelming trying to find an optimal configuration. Luckily, I love doing this kind of stuff, so I've messed around with each of these. And in this video, I'll explain each setting, their visual effect, how they affect performance, and then I'm going to show you my optimal setting. All right, so let's get into the settings menu. The first thing you can do is change your username. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can use up to 15 symbols. Interface language, you can change what language everything is displayed in. The main menu background, this just changes the background image. Factory gives you light bulbs. Woods will give you the branch, and then the lab gives you this camera that stares creepily at you. So I like to leave it on wood. These next three options, you can have auto hide always shown or always hidden. Auto hide will temporarily show it on the HUD and then disappear. Always shown and always hidden are pretty self-explanatory. Quick slots are the slots that are shown up here, numbered one through zero. Stamina and stance show in the lower left with a character illustration. Health condition is shown in the upper left with a character outline. And then you can choose how it's displayed using the health color scheme here between monochrome and polychrome. Moving on to the automatic RAM cleaner. If you have issues with memory leaks or loading into raids successively, Try this, or otherwise, just keep it off. It will basically clear the memory cache between raids. So if you're not having those issues, I would recommend leaving this unchecked. Only use physical cores. This option forces Tarkov to use the physical cores of your processor only. I've heard this is the optimal setting to use. I haven't seen any difference when I leave this checked on or off in my configuration. My recommendation is do a couple runs with it on, do a couple runs with it off, see if you can tell any difference. I couldn't, but you might have different results depending on your system. FOV stands for field of view. I think most people know what this is, but basically lowering it allows for larger targets and theoretically easier aiming. Raising it gives you a larger field of view, but smaller targets. So. I leave it at 63 to get kind of the best of both worlds and I like it right here. I've heard that max FOV is bugged when you use scopes or sights. So I think people who like to run max should run at 74. Otherwise, yeah, I leave mine right at 63 and I like this. I think this is a good trade-off between both. Head bobbing is what it says it is. When you're running, you'll get a lot more head bobbing motion. It adds to the realism a little bit, but it gives me some motion sickness and it makes the game a little bit more difficult to play. If you wanna pump up the realism, then put it on one. I leave it as low as possible when I play. Malfunction notifications. This is when your gun jams, it will pop up a notification in red, letting you know the gun is malfunctioning and that you need to adjust accordingly. Moving on to the graphics tab. For screen resolution, I recommend running the native resolution of your monitor. I'm running a Samsung Odyssey Neo G8. So I'm running at the native 3840 by 2160 resolution at a 16 to nine aspect ratio. You can manually adjust the aspect ratio if you want. I've seen some streamers run at 1610. It stretches the picture a little bit and makes everything a little bit wider. The streamers I watch say that it helps to make the targets a little bit bigger on screen and theoretically make it easier to aim at. I've tried this and I've had issues adjusting to the proportion difference. So it throws off my aim too much. I like to stay at 16 to nine, but some people do like to run that 16 10. It's always recommended to run exclusive full screen when you're running games. It's just the optimal setting. However, if you're a single screen user or you go in between applications a lot during gaming, you can run it on borderless and it should have minimal effect as long as you're running the monitor's native resolution. Going to the graphics sliders, Tarkov has 
certain presets for low, medium, high, and ultra. I have a custom configuration that I run instead of using their presets. What I'm gonna do is set up two nominal runs, one at the highest visual quality, and then one at the highest performance setting available. The way that I optimize my settings is by finding the right balance between these two settings where you don't lose too much performance, but you're not giving up too much of the visuals either. So I'll go over each of these settings, how they affect the visual fidelity and how they affect performance overall, and then give you the optimal setting for this configuration. Here are the max graphic settings, and here are the max performance settings. Moving on to texture quality, this determines the level of detail on the textures themselves. I think most people know what this does. I prefer to run this on high. On low, the textures are just too blurry. On medium, I don't think the performance trade-off for the amount of visuals you get are worth it. So I always run this on high. Okay, moving on to shadow quality. The setting changes the distance where the game starts to render shadows in higher resolution. So for me, I can't really tell in-game the difference between ultra and low, so I always run low. But if you want to see, look at when I approach the truck here. On the low side, you'll see it's very blurry. On the ultra side, you can see it's very sharp. Okay, to demonstrate what object LOD quality does, I'm going to set it at the minimum value of 2 right now and show you exactly what this does. So right now, I'm looking at this car, it's got the detailed model loaded up. I'm about 16 meters away from it. If I back up a few steps here, you're going to see that model change to a more basic, less shaded model. So from 16 to 17 meters. That's about the distance where it will cut off the more detailed models. And when you get in that range, it's gonna load up the more detailed version of that model. If we go to the max of four, let's see how far it takes us. So the cutoff is right around here, 30, 35. Yeah, so it looks like the, the slider is linear. Most people recommend running at 2.5. And that's at about at about 21 meters, that's where the car is. So, with this car, it's a little more obvious because that headlight shades in. But in most cases, you're not gonna see it be that dramatic. I'm using this as an example. 
I can also use that tree over there. So right now you can see it's not moving. When I move close enough, it, it turns into a swing detail tree. Right now it's a 2D model. I get close enough, then it turns into an actual 3D model that stays in the room. So if I were to be playing the game and I'm running across, honestly, I probably would not even notice that switch, that model switch up there. It's pretty subtle. When you're paying attention, you can definitely see it, but in practice, it's pretty subtle when it's that far. So that's what it does. I leave this at 2.5 for my standard setting. Now that you know what it does, you can adjust this accordingly to your preference. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of LOD 2, 2.5, and 4. Between 2 and 4, you lose a little less than 10% of the performance. But I think between 2 and 2.5, the performance difference is pretty negligible. But the advantage you get from putting it up 0.5 is pretty good. Okay, so for overall visibility, it appears that this setting actually corresponds to the in-game distance pretty closely. So if I put it at 400, I am just about 400 meters away from that rock over there. And if I close that distance, you can see that it actually draws in. So overall visibility pretty much puts an invisible barrier that determines where it stops drawing models. The higher the distance, the higher the value, the further away from you it is, the lower the value, the closer away that invisible barrier is. So that can be done as you can see here. So if I turn this all the way up to 3,000. It should take us a while for that rock to actually disappear from our view. I don't even know if I can get that far. It'll pretty much have everything drawn on the map. Most recommendations say to keep it around 1,500. I think that's pretty fair to say. I don't really see a benefit to extending it beyond that. Here is a performance comparison at 3000 versus 400. There's barely a difference between the maximum and minimum settings, so set this to your preference. I put four different anti-aliasing settings side by side here. You can really see the difference when you look at the staircase. When you look at no AA, you can see the lines are very jagged on the steps. And when you go over to TAA high, it's very smoothed out. Super sampling allows you to upscale the resolution with an in-game setting. Here I have it at 1x, 2x, and 4x. 1x is default and that's what I usually use. Alright, HBAO is Horizon Based Ambient Occlusion. It basically gives more depth and color to the shadows. If you pay attention to the picture in the bottom right where HBAO is off, you can see that the shading looks a lot less realistic and there's less blending of the colors. It tends to make things look more realistic but a little darker as well. Now I couldn't really tell a performance difference on this system, but your results may vary, so use this according to your preference. SSR is screen space reflections. Its effects are most visible with water, as you can see here. It has a pretty large visual effect. The performance hit for Ultra 
is pretty significant compared to SSR, it's close to 10%. What's well, nice with things like water, I don't really care for it that much, so I would rather take the performance. Anisotropic filtering, from the way I understand it, helps make textures look sharper when they're viewed at an angle. I used this rock patch as an example. You can really see the difference between off and on here. The, on the right, you can see it looks much clearer. And on the left side, the rocks are pretty blurry. So it has a pretty significant visual impact in my opinion. And there's about a 10% performance difference between leaving it off and on. Moving on to high quality color. It makes colors a little bolder, a little more vibrant. I like to use it because it makes things brighter and look more vibrant. But for those of you that prefer the original gritty, darker look of Tarkov, you probably want to leave this off. Z-Blur adds a bokeh, depth of field type effect. It actually isn't working for me properly, so I just created this simulated image to give you an idea of what it looks like. The actual effect may or may not look exactly like that, but it's similar to that. Turning noise on is self-explanatory. It adds noise to the picture. It makes the picture look a little grainier. Again, this is more for the immersion factor than the gameplay factor, so set it depending on your preference. Enabling grass shadows is, again, self-explanatory. It turns on shadows for the grass. You can see the comparison here. It has a small performance hit, so again, really just set it according to your visual preference. Chromatic aberration is supposed to simulate the dispersion of light that happens and causes distortion of an image's colors around the edges. I turned the setting on and off and I couldn't really tell the difference. No performance difference either. So for post effects, I could probably do its own feature video. For this video's purposes, I'm just going to show the difference between my setting and the default setting. First, I'll show the visual differences and then I'll show the performance difference, which is pretty significant. And here are the typical settings when I play. So I try to find a good balance between high visual fidelity and high performance. So I hope this guide was able to help you find your optimal settings for Escape from Tarkov. If this content was helpful to you, then please hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.